Yeah, so hi there. Here I am uh, biking along the Maribyrnong River, not far from Footscray Park campus, having a nice uh, leisurely stroll. So as I'm biking along, pretty casual, how's my breathing? I think it's pretty easy to talk right now. So you know my exercise intensity is going to be sub-maximal. Is it below my ventilatory threshold or lactate threshold? Yeah, probably, because otherwise it'd be more difficult to talk right now. Let's check my speed. 24k an hour. All right, that's not too bad. Now, I was biking with a mate a couple minutes ago, and he was biking behind me. Now, we know that the effects of aerodynamics suggest that the cyclist who rides behind someone expends 30 to 40 percent less energy than the person in the front so my mate was actually biking despite going at the same speed at a far less intensity so what do you think his vo2 would be compared to mine what do you think his heart rate and his ventilation rate would be compared to mine but see he was starting to annoy me so I had to put in a little acceleration and this acceleration caused a greater reliance on more energy ATP and I needed more energy uh, to go faster and to drop this mate of mine that means I need to produce ATP a lot faster so for about a minute there I stood up out of my bike and went really hard so that he could not have the benefit of drafting off me but by virtue all that ATP demand required massive new ATP production and for a little while there my intensity was higher my VO2 was higher of course my ventilation had to be higher why was my ventilation higher? what drives ventilation? is it the need for oxygen? or is it the need to get rid of carbon dioxide. Well, did I produce more carbon dioxide if I was going through faster rates of glycolysis in the Krebs cycle? Did I produce more carbon dioxide if I was producing more hydrogen ions? Was I producing more hydrogen ions? Was I producing more lactate? Well, for a little while there, I could barely talk, which means that I had to have been producing uh, or I was breathing a lot more and had to be producing more lactate and with more lactate there's more hydrogen and to buffer that hydrogen to keep my acidity at a nice level I needed to buffer that with bicarbonate which I can then convert to carbon dioxide and water and blow it off I'm heading up to a hill let's see what happens to my ventilation as we climb the hill Okay, so I'm just approaching a hill. I'm showing off now because I'm going no hands. But we're going up the hill by the Aldi store. I want you to pay attention to my ventilation. I'm going to try and ride up fairly steady. Obviously, I can't keep up. Ah, shit. Ah. Oh, geez. Saw that. A little bug in the eye. Pardon the profanity. It stung a little bit. All right. So obviously I can't maintain my 24 kilometers an hour. Check my watch, 14 kilometers an hour. Going up, not a long hill, but pretty steep. Oh, that could be dangerous. I lost my sunglasses the other day. Fell out of my back pocket. So what's happening now is I'm getting on top of the hill. What's happening to my VO2, my ATP needs, my ATP production? Do I need more ATP? How am I gonna get it? I had to go up that hill pretty quick. I couldn't use all fat for the higher energy demand. So I had to use more carbohydrate and more glycolysis with one of my end products being lactate. But look, it's flat now. But I'm still breathing. Why am I breathing? 
that's that epoch we talked about the little bit of oxygen debt I created climbing the hill I now have to pay back restore my creatine phosphate stores allow my respiration and heart rate to come back to normal but don't worry in a minute or two I'll be breathing fine and cruising at 24 kilometers an hour again <laughs>